Hello everyone and welcome back to another Magical Moon video. We're back down with Little Jack Sparrow and as you can see, if you watched yesterday, a massive improvement. So Jenny's been um, doing his mane and his tail and just thinning out and we've just been working around him and giving him a bit of a groom and just making him feel a little bit uh, more loved, which is nice. And he's really, really started to warm to that whole having stuff done to him and uh, with the front legs as you saw Jenny pick them out his back legs were where we were with the front legs yesterday and the day before but again just a little you know I managed to touch them and he picked them up and we made a fuss of him and just softly softly because every time we have that little positive experience it's going to make our job a whole lot easier and one of the things which I really or I forgot to mention yesterday is even though he's quite small He's got a lot more muscle mass than me and Jenny put together, or most humans. So the last thing you want is to get that muscle mass excited. And when it all gets tense and strong, it gets very, very awkward. So what I've learned is that all the time they're relaxed and you keep them as he is, it's a lot easier to do stuff and you don't then have to fight all that negative energy. So it's really, really important to keep their heart rate down, keep them relaxed and keep them nice and soft. And, and as I say, that's just another reinforcing. It's a good feeling. It's that nice feeling. And that goes for all animals. So any animal person, any people, well, people that understand animals will know that um, that's the best way. You just don't want to be going down the other route. So that's what he's getting. And as I say, it's really, really encouraging just to see how much improvement in such a, a short space of time. Um, but moving on, it's a bit wild and windy here, and I just wanted to say anyone in America affected by the, the recent storms, obviously our thoughts go out to anyone involved or anyone connected with anyone involved. You know, it must be, um, uh, it's a horrible time. Someone did post uh, something on the internet the other day, which I thought was interesting, that to the remote parts where they've been cut off, so there's no vehicular access, they're using donkeys and horses to get the supplies into those cut off areas. So it just goes to show, again, what wonderful animals are and how versatile they are and that they're still being used in this day and age when you wouldn't necessarily assume that. So we're gonna go now, we've got to get on with the legends. It's, uh, as I say, it's a bit wild and windy, but they're all enjoying it. And they're out in the fields having a bit of grass. So we're gonna bring them in one at a time. The stables are all done and then it's on with the rest of the day.
So we're back in the Legends barn and they're all comfy and snug in their stables. They've just had their lunch and they're enjoying their hay now. So it's that time of the day where we're going to go in and get a bite to eat and we're going to leave them to it. But on another note, behind me is Staz, who was a stallion and we had him cut later on in life. So he was cut when he was uh, about the same age, wasn't he? Yeah, as, he was. as about 21, 22. Um, and it's obviously a risky procedure. So we're going to wait until he's settled down. As I said yesterday, we just want to get him more comfortable being around people before we introduce him to the vet. Um, and then I'll get the vet just to come out, obviously check him over, do a few of those initial tests, um, and then we're going to make a plan for him. But um, as I was saying, when I was standing with Nanny, not so far into the field, she's completely content. They're all fine with him being about because we're protecting them and we're protecting him by He's in that lovely stable in the workshop where Petra was, and these guys can all roam about. And now, when it's that time, he can go out and he can enjoy the outside. So it's just a case of keeping them where they need to be at this moment, because obviously we don't want to stress anyone. And as you can see, they all look pretty relaxed. And also, it's really important to point out that obviously the little stallion that we've picked up, Jack Sparrow, is not the stallion that was tormenting Nanny and Petra because that would be cruel and we're not cruel people so we would not go and pick up that stallion and unfortunately that stallion is no longer with us. He went to wherever that place was that the others are all destined to go. So Jack is a little tiny stallion. He wasn't planned. We, you know, we didn't ask him and we didn't want him but he's here and I think we're actually all going to really enjoy him and I think watching him flour flourish just in the last couple of days has yeah. been amazing and it's a really really special thing so it is it's very heartwarming to see as I said before that trust but that forgiveness that all animals possess where without question as soon as they get that consistency that love and that kindness they're okay and yes there might be moments when they think about things which have happened but generally, they'll go, this situation's pretty good. And uh, here at the Magical Moon household, we, we thrive on that. And, and all the legends and all the other animals are part or testament to, to that working. And, um, and yeah, it's just lovely to see them all um, to flourish. But more importantly, how quickly they come around. Like Grace and Charlotte, when they came, how bewildered they were and the same with Petra and Nanny uh, but just very quickly they they just know that it's going to be okay and that's a lovely thing a really um, a really lovely thing to be able to give them and also just in the comments last night there was a comment about some of the horses that we've taken on that aren't legends I'd just like to say that all of these horses are legends because what they have been through gives them that name yes we have very high profile horses here and behind the scenes what you don't see and what we don't film is how hard we're working to get that legislation in place but what we do do when we go to these places and we pick up horses for example let's take Grace and Charlotte yes Grace is more elite than Charlotte. Should we have left Charlotte behind? Put yourself in that situation because that's where we are. When we go to these places and we see these animals and they need help, if we're in a position to help them, we will help them. So there may be Epilanda Fouquet, Canto Z, famous horses hanging around next to dear old Charlotte, who's not famous, but she was, un was unwanted and she was in need of our help. And I hope that of the majority of our followers love the fact that we go on and we take on these horses and we do the very, very best we can for them. But um, it's just one of those things. That's what makes up the Moon family. We are unique and we will continue to do what we are doing. And we just can't thank you all enough for supporting us on our journey. Yeah. And on that note, just to further that, it is evidence that Epilan and his legacy lives on throughout all these horses and our family. And part of that legacy, apart from putting systems in place to protect the elite sport horses, has always been for it to filter down and affect horses from every ability and every walk of life around the world. So we're in a very, very cherished and lucky position that we're able to target the elite with the hope that it goes on to better the equine world. So it's really, well, the future is very bright, it's very positive. And as Jenny, Jenny said before, we are doing so much in the background to, to kind of keep our powder dry for when we've got that support, we've got that following, and we can really approach those people with the certainty that change will come. And I think we all have to remember, the one that touched our hearts the most is Petra. And to bless her, she was nothing to nobody.
She was that horse that nobody wanted and she has created such a ripple. So that's why she's a legend and that's why we will continue to rescue the horses that we rescue because we can and because we have the support of you. And also, before we go, to go to those places and to have those contacts or to have a, a point of contact gives us the opportunity that if a world superstar legend does cross their paths, they know that we're here and we're actively ready to receive that horse. So if another Cantlo or another Epilan, you know, one of the very top horses ends up there, which they will somewhere, one will... Uh, they are every day ending up there, but we, they will cross our path. So, um, yeah, we're, we're optimistic that, um, that that's part of the process. But thank you all again, as Jenny said, for your love and support and your kindness. And it's only left to say that stay magical and uh, keep spreading the word. See you soon. <laughs>